Yeah, how, how did you know my father? Well, first of all, anytime you think about Tony Vega, you gotta start off like Tony Vega. Jesus loves you. Uh, <laughs> I knew your father when he was riding high, just came out his uh, most productive year, what, 84, 85. Um, my wife and Tony uh, both grew up in New Brunswick, and uh, a lot of times Tony uh, would sleep at my wife's house. She had eight brothers. Tony was friends with all the brothers, and my mother-in-law always had food on the table, so Tony would come from the track, a little tired, eating some good uh, Spanish food, some rice and beans, and he would hang at my mother-in-law's house. All right, now, is there any, uh, do you remember any particular days or times? Where, uh, do you remember my father riding? Was there any times you being at the races or watching him ride or period of time where he was competing that you might might come to mind you might remember well I used to go to the track with Tony every Wednesday and I used to cut hair in the jocks room before the before the races so I got to know everybody Florentino Drew Capone Chris Antley uh, all the guys from the track his brother uh, Alfredo and so every Wednesday, I would be with Tony down the track, and uh, it, it was a uh, it was a culture that uh, was a very c close bunch of friends. Although they competed very tough on the track, when they were in their quiet time, they all respected each other and they all looked out for each other. And uh, Tony was noted for. Uh, one of the only jockeys that would split horses. That means when two horses are uh, riding down a track and Tony's behind him, most jockeys won't split through the middle because it could cause an accident to either horse or all three horses at once. And Tony was notorious for that, which was a legal move. And um, after a while, when Tony established himself, and he would say, I'm coming through, usually they would try to close up, but after a while, Tony was, uh, got his respect, they knew he was coming through, they were spread open. And that's why he won a lot of races, because he was he had no fear. He had no fear of uh, falling down, he had no fear of uh, getting hurt. Um, he was just an inner city street kid that uh, brought it to uh, a world that he really didn't know about, it wasn't accustomed to, and they didn't know about street guys like this because most of those jockeys were like kind of raised into that job because they were small yeah, yeah. and they had people but Tony was a straight up kid off the street one day and went in uh, second place in the Eclipse Award in 1985 only second to Angel Cordero and Angel and him were pretty good friends well yeah and there's uh do you remember anything uh did you ever get a chance to hang out with uh, any of the, uh, the riders that my father competed against, like Chris Antley and uh, uh, Julie Crow, any of those guys? After the track, like I said, every Wednesday was my day off. After the track, they would all go to this uh, place down the street from Mama. It was, a, it was a pink house. It was a bar, and that's where all the jockeys, the trainers, and the owners would meet. And they'd be like 50, 60 uh, groupies girls that used to go to this place and just hope that a jockey would talk to them and it was a friendly uh, outgoing atmosphere and a lot of uh, business was made with the uh, trainers and the owners uh, uh, scheduling uh, mounts for the jockeys there yeah, and, yeah. and talking about what happened and what went wrong and what went right for the day so yeah I mean we went out hundreds and hundreds of times with, with everybody. As a matter of fact, when uh, Chris Antley, uh, we found him dead in his apartment, I think in California, and I watched, they did a show on him, and I watched the show, and it was, it was a, a dramatization, and they said when he died, there was only, he was naked, there was only one thing on him, was a, a medal with a jockey in, on a horse driving with a diamond in it. And one day I cut Chris Antley's hair, and uh, he gave me 10 winners in a row. And it wasn't a fixed race. He just knew what kind of horse he had under him. And for 
10 races, I won every race, and I went out and I bought him this nice gold necklace with a jockey and a diamond in it. And it was, it was very eerie to see that televised on TV about his strange death. And he had, uh, he had the uh, necklace on, it was the only thing on his body. So that was, uh, I guess he liked what I gave him. Uh, I didn't like to see the kid, what they think of his suicide.